right, as you guys can see here, I play with an Xbox Elite controller on PC. Nothing has changed. Xbox Elite controller is one of my favorite controllers on the market right now. Very durable, and honestly, it feels great in your hands. Now, I have not went ahead and changed the button assignment on the back of my controller. As you guys can see, I only have one paddle here that's going to be set to A for jumping. Now, my button layout has also remained the same. I'm running tactical. Tactical is going to be the absolute best button layout to play on in Modern Warfare 2 because we can get in and out of cover a lot easier. And you can also perform a drop shot, which can help you guys out at those close range engagements. You guys have probably saw in a lot of my gameplays that I like to go ahead and get in and out of cover, as well as drop shot when I run into either a shotgunner or somebody at point blank range. Now again, my bumper ping is going to be turned off. I don't have my controller buttons flipped. My stick layout is going to be on default. And I also have controller vibration shut off as well. This is actually one setting that you guys are going to go ahead and turn off and never turn it back on or turn it off and find that you actually like it. Now, if you guys are struggling with your accuracy at longer ranges, I highly recommend you guys going ahead and turning off vibration. You want to have as little stick player and controller as possible so you guys can be as accurate as possible at long ranges because that's where people are going to fall short. Now, you guys can also see here, I've actually went ahead and bumped up my sensitivity. Normally, I'd be rocking either a three or a four. I've now increased it to a six horizontal as well as a six vertical i've always been an advocate of running a low sensitivity but as i've gotten more used to modern warfare 2 i've decided to go ahead and bump that up and i've been seeing a lot better improvement in my gameplay as far as seeing people out at close ranges obviously coupling that with the tactical button layout is going to be a huge positive now you guys can also probably see here that i've actually changed my ads sensitivity in multiplayer i've actually bumped this down to compensate for the higher stick sensitivity that I'm now running. I used to play on 0.75 because I'm now on six. I like to go ahead and mirror this. I'm putting this at 0.65. So I have this little stick play so I can be as accurate as possible at longer ranges, but still running a higher sensitivity setting. Maybe in a couple months, I'll bump this up to maybe a seven or an eight. But in all reality, I feel that six is going to be the best compromise. You can still turn on players, but still be accurate at longer ranges as you guys have seen in my gameplays. Now, for sensitivity on multiplayer, you guys can also see here, everything else is going to be pretty much the default. I don't have any of these chains as far as the target sensitivity, tablet, air, vehicles. None of this actually does matter. Now, we're actually going to go over to the aim down sight behavior. Obviously, it's going to be on standard as well. I've not went ahead and messed with any of this, and I don't think you guys should also. All these are going to be throwing you off if you do adjust it. The only thing I do actually have adjusted under the controller settings is I have automatic tactical sprint turned on. Now, this is going to be very important if you want to be able to get on the map quickly and have a more aggressive running gun play style, which I think a lot of us actually prefer to play with. So definitely go ahead and have automatic tactical sprint turned on. You're going to like this a little bit more. you will be more agile. And overall, you're going to be transitioning from position to position and gunfight to gunfight a hell of a lot smoother. But again, everything else is going to be pretty much default under the controller settings. Now, if we go over to advanced, you guys can also see here, obviously, my target aim assist is turned on. We're playing with the controller, so definitely have aim assist on. There's really no point unless you're trying to torture yourself to shut this off. My aim assist type is going to be on default. You can still run Black Ops if you want to, but in my personal opinion, since they went ahead and actually changed how Black Ops aim assist works in a previous update, I say recommended default is going to be your best option because the last thing you want to do is get used to something, have them tweak it, and have to learn how to aim all over again. That's something that I definitely do not want to have happen to either myself or you guys. Now, again, everything else here is going to be pretty much actually turned off here i don't have a gyro controller so i don't actually mess with any of these settings these are going to be shut off because they're going to be completely irrelevant now again aiming aim assist response curve type this is going to be on standard as well i don't mess with any of these either because again they've had tweaks in the past on these games so the last thing i want to do is get used to something and have them change it in all reality the only thing you really need to go ahead and focus on is making sure you're running a sensitivity that fits your play style definitely you can actually use that you could be accurate at longer ranges because that's what people are going to be falling short or again everything else is going to be pretty much the same across the board now here is the dead zone inputs here i don't really have anything changed in my dead zone input this is going to be one of those settings that you're going to want to adjust based off your controller's health 
Now, here's the thing. If you have a scuff like controller, you're going to have to go ahead and increase your dead zone to go ahead and compensate for the stick drift, the stick play that you might have in your controller. Now, for me personally, this is why I advocate Xbox Elite is because they are durable and they last. So you don't have to go ahead and adjust dead zone based off of your controller's health. If you have a newer controller, the less dead zone you have to run. If you have a older controller that has, you know, wear and tear, you're going to actually go ahead and increase that dead zone so you can have as little stick play as possible. Now, I have left all of the other advanced settings the same. I have not changed any of these, and I recommend you guys going ahead and leaving them at default right out the box because these are actually set up pretty solid, and they're not gonna impact your gameplay one bit if you guys go ahead and leave these how they were when you guys first load up Modern Warfare 2. Now, under the graphics setting, we're taking a look at the View tab, which is gonna be crucial, incredibly important if you guys are trying to improve your aim, accuracy, and gun skill. You guys can see here that I play on a 120 FOV with the ADS field of view set to affected. Now, independent is what it comes by default. You want to switch this to affected. I see so many people, so many people running independent and I don't know why. Affected with a higher FOV set to at least 110 is gonna make it feel like your weapons have low recoil no recoil it's gonna make it feel and look like how you know some guys might say youtubers and streamers have aimbot no recoil their guns don't move this is the setting you guys want to enable when you guys are trying to improve your aim accuracy and most important gun skill now once you guys go ahead and do this you're gonna find out that your weapons especially if you're running iron sights are gonna be a lot more controllable at longer ranges and you're gonna see a immediate improvement at your long range engagement capabilities now again everything else is gonna be pretty much the fault here i've not went ahead and changed any of this sometimes people have to go ahead and play on wide personally i think default is gonna be your good option i don't really see it difference going ahead and switching from wide to default so i leave it the same the most important thing you want to do is adjust your affected ads field of view and as well as your regular field of view when just playing multiplayer again all this is going to be pretty much the same here i'm not messing with any of these settings these are going to be the two you want to adjust right now do it immediately now we're skipping over the quality as well as the display settings you guys might be wondering why am i doing that that's going to be honestly user specific I make content on YouTube, so my settings are not going to be what you want to run. And also, I play on a PC. You might be playing on a console. These settings are going to be pretty much irrelevant from what I run and what you guys should be running. And under the audio settings tab, this is going to be very important here. This is why they call me ears, because you want to set your audio mix to headphone based boost. This is going to drastically improve your gameplay and overall your awareness on what's going on in game. Now, if you guys have a headset, I have Astro A40TRs, a little bit of an older headset, but they get the job done. Honestly, if you've had a headset for the past three to five years, any headset you've bought within the past three to five years, headphone bass boost is going to be important to run because you'll be able to hear footsteps as well as gunfire. So essentially, you can be able to figure out where people are at on the map without actually having a UAV. And that's going to be critical, absolutely critical when trying to go ahead and go on high gun streaks or secure an MGB nuke, which I know a lot of you guys are trying to get done, or maybe you guys have already done it, you're trying to get some more. So make sure you guys go ahead and have that adjusted. Now, again, everything else is gonna be pretty much the same here. I've not went ahead and messed with any of these settings because honestly, we're not gonna have to. The most important thing you want to do under the audio settings is make sure that your headphone bass boost setting is turned on and you guys are playing with a headset because it's gonna make a massive improvement to your gameplay and then finally we're taking a look at the interface settings the only thing you want to go ahead and switch on interface is you want to go down to the mini map and you want to make sure this is set to square it comes on round by default square is going to be the better option it's going to give you a bigger picture a bigger mini map picture so you can go ahead and figure out people are at and overall have a better understanding on what's happening in each match but that's going to be it. These are going to be the best settings to use right now here in Modern Warfare 2. Definitely go ahead and adjust your sensitivity if you have not already, as well as your ADS sensitivity and multiplayer in order to drastically improve your aim, accuracy, as well as gun skill. And for the love of God, guys, go to your graphics setting. I'm going to say it again. Go over to view 
and make sure you have a higher fov 110 preferably 120 and affected selected man you're gonna see a tremendous a tremendous improvement in your gameplay if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you guys drop a like on the vid subscribe to the channel and turn those post notifications it's been your boy ears i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one man deuces good luck